Alright, so let's cover the last few days of VTuber news and see what I've missed. As of September 30th, Iron Mouse beat Kai Sinat's record of 306,000 Twitch subs, becoming the number one all-time most sub streamer on the platform. Huge W, huge win, you love to see it. I love Mousy, and I'm always happy to see her succeed. Now, although all the top comments are extremely supportive and celebratory of Iron Mouse, if you scroll down even a little bit, you find a shitload of haters. Such as, nah, lost to a pixel. What a time to be alive, the number one streamer isn't even a human. Which is an insane thing to say, because aside from the lore of the character being Satan, obviously Iron Mouse is a human. I don't know why so many people think that VTubers are AI. With the exception of Neurosama, I'm not aware of any VTubers that are genuinely actually AI generated. This next comment, surely a sign of the end times. Yes, the end of the world brought to you by Iron Mouse. Like, <laughs> like what the fuck, dude? I've never even heard of this AI hoe. Why does everyone think VTubers are AI? The anime masturbators won. Society has failed. Lord send all the asteroids now. We don't deserve to inhabit Earth anymore. I can't even be angry at all this hate because people are being so fucking dramatic that a VTuber took the top spot. VTubers have been around for years. Get fucking over it, my dude. Or this, who the fuck is this? Industry plan. Because what the fuck? Pathetic, uwu, untalented weirdo. Hate the internet. Industry plan? Bro, everyone who hates Iron Mouse just says things that are so easily disproven. Industry plan. Mousy was streaming for ages before she actually popped off. Listen, I obviously love Iron Mouse, and I don't know much about Kai Sinat. But in my opinion, the best way to squash all of this drama is for the two of them to collab. I personally love chaos. I love absolute nonsense. I love when you take two extreme personalities and just sort of force them to coexist for the entertainment of the viewer. I think it would be hilarious to watch a Kai and Mousy stream. I bet every dollar in my wallet, Mousy would be down to do a collab with Kai. But that's just my opinion. The next thing I wanted to talk about is the fact that YouTube Shorts will increase video length to three minutes. Which, while not a bad thing per se, I do think this is relatively pointless. If I was going to be yapping for three minutes straight, why would I want to be constrained to a vertical format? Not to mention, shorts don't make any money. If I got three minutes worth of shit to say, I'ma make it a normal video because it's easier to format, and I'm also going to be able to run an ad before it, meaning I'm actually going to get paid for my work. I strongly feel like the only people who are going to use this feature are people who are used to uploading on TikTok and want to re-up all of their TikToks that are over 60 seconds to YouTube. That's literally the only person who benefits from this. No one else is gonna use this. It is mostly pointless. The next thing I wanted to talk about is that Niji Sanji VTuber Ryoma Baronward played Apex Legends with Doki Bird, formerly Selen Tataki, and Niji Sanji decided to be petty and private the VOD. It's just annoying that they happen to get randomly matched together, and that caused him to get his entire VOD nuked. It feels like such a waste in my opinion. The next thing I want to talk about is Katarina Cutie of Idol EN has unfortunately gotten into a car accident. Apparently a driver cut her off in a dangerous way that caused her to steer to the other side. And while trying to avoid crashing into him, she crashed into another driver. She says she is okay, but shaken and anxious. And of course the mad driver that cut her off sped off so she can't get insurance details from him. So that's annoying. It's also annoying that because she's the one who crashed into the other person, she's likely going to be deemed guilty and have to pay to fix not only her car, but also the car she crashed into, even though it's not her fault. I'm sure the situation sucks ass and is probably going to be wildly expensive and inconvenient, but at the very least, she's safe and ultimately that's what matters. The next piece of news I wanted to cover is from Vienna where she says that unfortunately her worst nightmare happened and her trip to Germany had to be cut short because apparently her pre-existing heart condition was acting up and after a medical episode she honestly thought it could have been the end for her. But thankfully she was hospitalized and she was brought back up to full health. And with any luck the treatment she's receiving might be able to treat her well enough so that she'll never have to experience this again, which would be phenomenal news. 
and here she is giving a thumbs up to let us know that she is all okay and being grateful for what sounds like high quality German healthcare. Much love and I wish her nothing but a speedy recovery. And she released an update earlier today where she said she's finally made it home safe and sound, still getting her strength back and figuring everything out, but she appreciates all the love and support that people have been showing her. So it's good to know that things have worked out in the end. The next thing that I wanted to talk about is that fellow news tuber Lydia Nekazawa has been warned by Twitch for sexual themes. And she says she believes this is a targeted attack because there was nothing sexual about the stream she was doing when she got this warning. Watching the video she posted, it's absolutely nuts that this content right here got a sexual content warning. Like, oh no, pixel ducks, too slutty for Twitch. Meanwhile, if you wanna take a peek over at the uh, pools and hot tub section over on Twitch, I'm sure you won't find anything scandalous over there that's worse than what Lydia is doing. Honestly, at this point, I don't know if anyone can argue that VTubers aren't being targeted by Twitch. They just hate us. The next piece of news I wanted to talk about is that Twitch has changed the rules for raiding other streamers. Now, you no longer have to be a partner or affiliate to raid others. I think myself and the rest of the Twitch community agree that raids are a great way to show mutual support in either direction. The next thing I wanted to draw your attention to is a uh, VTuber by the name of Doobie3D. And uh, you can call me crazy, but I could swear this voice sounds a little familiar. You jumped in front of my bullet. Oh, I got an ace, what the fuck? <laughs> oh, <laughs> yes, yeah. If you know, you know. Twitch.tv slash Doobie3D, go show them some love. So the next thing that I wanted to talk about is this update to the Steam subscriber agreement, which as you may or may not know, previously required all issues that you have with Steam to be resolved through arbitration, which means you're not going to criminal court, you're just negotiating the terms of your civil dispute off the books. This is usually something that's very good for companies because it's usually a lot faster, a lot cheaper, and even if they pay out a large sum of money to the party that's trying to sue them, they don't have to admit any wrongdoing or face any criminal accusations. However, they've recently waived all of that, including removing their class action waiver. Now, if I could levy a guess as to why they're doing this, this isn't confirmed anywhere. This is pure hypothesis. One thing a class action lawsuit allows you to do is it allows you to do something that you can't do in arbitration. Arbitration is case by case by case by case by case. And even though normally it's faster, if you've got a lot of people suing all at once, it actually takes exponentially longer. Whereas a class action lawsuit allows you to review all of the lawsuits all at once. And that makes the process exponentially faster. So I suspect what has happened is Steam is getting sued by a lot of people. And a class action option is just going to be substantially more convenient. And seeing as this new update exclusively applies to North America, I think it's reasonable to assume that all of these incoming lawsuits are coming from the US and Canada. It'll be very interesting to see if there is a large scale public class action lawsuit that we see in the very, very near future involving Steam. So keep your eyes peeled for that. And the last thing I wanted to talk about today was an interview that Fallen Shadow, also known as Shondo, had with bounding into comics. I was attracted by the headline that said, the rules are constantly manipulated depending on who the recipient of the punishment is. Along with the review that this is quote, painful to read at times. So that definitely piqued my interest. So I'm gonna go through some of the highlights of this article. And I just wanna point out, it is hilarious to me that in this article, in which Shondo is talking about what is effectively VTuber persecution, the quote, related article is Twitch insisting that there is no mod who hates VTubers, which to me feels impossible. Like, of course there are mods who hate VTubers. But that's more of an observation than news. Let's continue with the actual article. Right off the bat, this interview covers some very interesting details, where one of the first interesting things they talk about is how Shondo says that she has had 
bipolar schizoaffective disorder since childhood. She also mentioned in the interview that she is actually the sole breadwinner of her household. She lives with her mother and four siblings. And even though her mother works, it's not nearly enough to cover all the basics. And immediately after establishing that Shondo is dealing with mental health issues and is effectively the sole breadwinner in her household, they then go on to talk about her band, where Shondo even admits that she got a little bit too emotional on her stream, but says she doesn't actually regret anything that she said, going on to explain that if it weren't for the fact that she has a streaming career, she's not sure she'd be alive right now, and how she's stressed out because she has so many people relying on her. Being a streamer is an incredibly fickle and unstable career path, and her medication might not work forever, so she is very much actively teetering on a collapse at all times which sounds nightmarish, and I wouldn't wish that on my worst enemy. She then goes on to explain that after she was banned, she initially received no email or any other communication from Twitch regarding the ban, how long it would be, or what policy they even violated. In fact, the only reason she even found out about her ban was because of a Twitter bot that tweets out Twitch partner bans as they happen. And it is genuinely insane to me that a Twitter bot account is the most effective and reliable Twitch communication these days, it seems. How the fuck does a bot know about her ban before she does? That's insane. Now, it took longer to get into contact with Twitch because this came through on a weekend, it seems. And apparently they don't work weekends. But what is crazy is that the email they sent her regarding her ban didn't even specify what policy she violated. In fact, she thought the email was thrown together so hastily, she actually thought it was a fake email at first. Now, after speaking with her partner manager, Shondo explains that because she has got a lolly avatar, she is not allowed to make any sexual content in any capacity, even content that would be completely fine for a VTuber model that just looks older. And she even asked if these different policy rules would apply to a webcam streamer who also looks young or debatably underaged, and she was told specifically that they likely would not apply to them. So this enhanced skepticism is exclusively and only for VTubers with lolly avatars. And when she asked for the list of standards on what she is and isn't allowed to do, she was told the moderation team said it isn't possible to provide that because it's not an actual legal policy, which is fucking insane. They're basically admitting they arbitrarily enforce TOS that doesn't apply to anyone else just because of the way her model looks. There is no policy for them to cite to her because it's not an actual policy. When she asked how she was expected to follow rules without knowing what the rules were, the partner manager struggled to reply and said that she should just, quote, do her best not to do anything that could possibly be perceived as sexual, which is hopelessly vague. And to give you an idea of how vague and random these policies are, she got a seven day ban for showing feet. So just to reiterate, any other cam girl could show feet. Most VTubers can show feet, but because of the way her model looks, she's not allowed to show feet. This only applies to this specific subgroup of VTubers. And what's crazy is, she actually spoke about this directly to CEO Dan Clancy, and he said that there was no extra set of rules for her, but moderation is right, and she must not make sexual content. And I feel like I'm taking crazy pills, because how can you say in one breath there are no extra rules, and then in the next breath say, oh, by the way, here are the extra rules that you need to follow. So if you felt like VTubers were being persecuted and unfairly treated by Twitch moderation, and how VTubers seem to constantly trip over rules they didn't even know existed, you're not crazy, you are being punished for violating rules that don't exist. But despite being subject to rules that don't exist, again, remember, Twitch says, there is no mod who hates VTubers. And of course, they go on to talk about the same old absolute hypocrisy where 
cam girls seem to be able to get away with whatever the hell they want. And here's the thing, even if you happen to agree that there should not be sexualized lolly VTubers on Twitch, surely you could at least understand the fact that Twitch is literally admitting to enforcing rules that don't exist and singling out streamers just for how they look. CEO Dan Clancy himself has effectively admitted that he knows Twitch moderation is arbitrary and asinine and stupid and impossible to predict and effectively told us to our faces, it's gonna stay that way forever and there's nothing we can do about it. And I hope after explaining all of this, you understand where I'm coming from when I say that if you stream on Twitch, it would behoove you to multi-stream on YouTube as well. YouTube is the one-stop shop for live streams, videos, shorts, and community posts all in one convenient spot. There's nothing wrong with having a YouTube and a Twitch and a TikTok and a Twitter. That's fine, but YouTube does everything in one place. And if you get kicked off a platform somewhere else, you're gonna need a second place option to go to if and when you get banned. Multi-streaming on as many platforms as possible isn't just a neat way to increase viewership. It's a means of insurance to protect your career in case one platform decides to fuck you one day because you violated a rule that doesn't even exist. So that's everything I wanted to talk about today. I hope you enjoyed the video. Feel free to leave a comment in the comment section down below about everything we talked about today. I'm genuinely very curious to hear what everyone has to say about everything we covered today. But that's all for now. Bye guys.